Eurozone chiefs say that the worst is over for the region's crisis, but there is not much sign of that in the car market, with sales down another 16% in December. Well, for his thoughts on uh, the market and the outlook for demand, I'm joined now by Renault Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn. Mr. Ghosn, thank you very much for talking thank to you. us today. Um, I know you get asked this regularly, but is there any sign of an upturn in Europe's car market now to parallel what we're apparently seeing in the broader Eurozone market? No, I don't think you will see an upturn in 2013. You, what you may see is a deceleration of the decline. So, so our uh, best forecast today is that the European market will contract by 3% uh, in addition to the previous contractions. Uh, but but I, I, I don't feel at all uh, optimistic about the prospect of an upturn yet. Where does that leave the situation vis-a-vis -vis restructuring in, in your home market in France? You've been in talks with the unions, seem to be going quite well, but recently we've heard words like blackmail being used by some of the unions. Are we at a watershed now for no, the... No, look, uh, I, th I think France is at a turning point. The country is at a turning point. Uh, uh, France definitely is going towards reform and towards reestablishing uh, its competitiveness. There is a national agreement which has been signed between the unions and the employers backed by the government in order to unleash this kind of uh, specific agreements that each company or each sector is going to do. That's what we are doing. We're not trying to solve an immediate problem. We're trying to solve a problem which is a mid and to long term problem about how to establish competitiveness in our operations in France. So it's not a blackmail. Or, this is a whole where from one side we're asking for efforts in terms of productivity. From the other side, we are guaranteeing workload and we are uh, working toward increasing the production and the work in France. One thing you've said, I believe, is that if the unions play ball, you might, Renault might be able to build more Nissan cars in France, uh, which is, of course, where the blackmail accusation came in. Um, but if that happened, how significant might it be in terms of units, models? Uh, you know, what, what we are uh, trying to do is uh, uh, take a kind within this agreement uh, propose that if a competitiveness contract is being signed uh, with everybody involved doing what ha it has to do, uh, the company can commit to increase production in France, even though bring not only increase production because we are going on the offensive with the Renault brand, but also by bringing some partners' production to France. Well, it's very difficult to persuade our partners to come and uh, you know, ask us to produce for them in France if there is no commitment on uh, the performance of France. And that's why we are signing this agreement. Okay. Um, austerity and the recession has seemed to have helped you to extract some concessions from Spanish unions. I wonder if you, when you look at the situation, do you expect a sharper, more competitive Spanish industry to emerge because of this? And how would that affect your decision making vis-a-vis -vis France? I mean, if, if you get decent concessions in Spain, you might, that, that's going to be, look like a more attractive Well, I, I, think, I think what's taking place in, in Spain is, is, is not concession, is a restructuring. It's a real restructuring of the economy uh, in which Spain wants to become much more competitive. So what we, uh, the agreement that we signed for Spain is, uh, it contains some fundamental shifts compared to what we have seen in the past. So I think Spain is going very quickly in the right direction of establishing in industrial competitiveness. Now, Spain is Spain, France is France. I don't think you can just transpose a solution which works in Spain to France. Now, this being said, you know, all Europe has a problem of competitiveness and all Europe has to do country by country an effort in order to establish it. Spain is on the right track to do it. France has initiated it. Okay, just a couple more questions. Um, a, a quick word on electric cars. You said uh, previously you saw them taking 10% of the global market by 2020. You seem a bit more nuanced on that recently. Are you, uh, you, would you care to revise that forecast for us? No, no, we maintain the potential of 10%, at least in the market where the car is offered. Obviously, it cannot be 10% of a market yeah, I mean, where, where, the car is not, where, where the car is not being proposed. But isn't, but that, at isn't, least that, a, isn't that a step back from 10% of the global market, full stop? No, no, uh, we, we said 10% of the global market taking in consideration that the electric cars will be launched in the global market. But we're going step by step. I mean, China uh, is already planning, the, you know, the State Council has already decided that it would like to have more than 2 million uh, cars uh, by two, tw 2020 between electric and plug-in hybrid. Plug-in hybrid means it's an electric car with a small engine to support, uh, to support the battery. So uh, I, I think I'm very bullish on China. I think the United States is going to go into the right direction. 
France also is supporting the electric cars. So when you take these markets where you have a government policy, where you have a willingness to implement infrastructure, the potential of 10% is there. And I think it's going to move very fast. Now, if you have countries where there is absolutely no interest into developing electric car, where there is absolutely no support, I don't think we'll reach the 10%. So I so maintain the 10%, but I'm saying it's 10% where the car is offered. Okay which is slightly different from 10% of the global it's, market. Yeah, but, look, we, yeah. we have to evolve in function of the evolution of the market and particularly in function of what we're seeing from the reaction of the public sector. Because we said from the beginning, electric cars will not be a big factor in the industry unless there is a support from uh, the public sector. Okay, final question, looking at the structure of uh, Renault-Nissan. Since the alliance was formed, Nissan has out outperformed Renault generally. Can we assume that before you step down, whenever that might be, um, you'll look at restructuring the, the alliance to reflect what people would say is the undervaluation of Nissan? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think what, what may happen is uh, we, we're driving for synergies. We, what we're trying to develop more and more synergies between the two companies. And um, for the moment, this drive for synergies is working very well. Uh, the day that the drive for synergies will be blocked, by the organization, we may review the organization. But in fact, what we're looking here is additional performance, additional performance for both company, uh, coming from its own proper performance and it's coming from putting things together to develop, uh, to develop synergies. Okay, Mr. Gohan, thank you very much for talking to us today. That was Renault Nissan CEO Carlos Gohan talking to Reuters here in Davos. I'm Julian Tabthwaite. This is Reuters.